Greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I trust you are well and that your souls are prospering. Even this morning, I come before you with part four, the final part of the message entitled 12 Strategies of the Devil Against Human Beings or 12 Strategies of the Devil Against People. So far, we have covered uh, nine of those strategies, and they are as follows. Number one, Satan uses lies because he is the father of lies. Number two, he blinds the minds of unbelievers. Number three, he masquerades as an angel of light and righteousness. Number four, he performs false signs and wonders through his servants. Number five, Satan tempts people to sin against God through sensual and other types of desires. Number six, <clears throat> Satan plucks the word of God out of people's hearts and thus chokes their faith. Number seven, Satan causes some oppression, spiritual attacks, emotional attacks, sickness, and disease. Number eight, Satan is a matter from the beginning of the human race. Number nine, Satan fights against the plans of evangelists or missionaries. And then I'm going to the last three points, which I'm going to cover quickly. Number ten is that uh, Satan accuses Christians or the people who are courtly before the Almighty God. I'm going to read from Revelation chapter 12. From Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says in verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down has been cast down. So what we pick from that verse is that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. It is not something which is started uh, after Jesus Christ came to the earth. It's something which the devil has been doing from long ago, even during the Old Testament. If we go to Job chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man? One who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered to the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? So that was the first prong of his accusation against Job. That Job was fearing God because of the things that uh, he was getting from God. Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and these possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. So uh, the argument that the devil deployed was actually two-pronged. He was accusing both Job and the Almighty God. He was accusing Job of serving God for pecuniary, selfish, and classic reasons, and he was accusing the Almighty God of bribing Job with blessings for Job to, to worship him. Uh, obviously, we know it was a false accusation because Job remained steadfast and he kept his integrity until the end. So we see that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. So when you are going through trials, it might be that in the realms of the spirit, the enemy casts aspersions of doubt against your character. Uh, and you have to go through the testing for for you to prove uh, your metal in the things of the spirit or to prove the your integrity, so to speak, when it comes to your character. 
before the Almighty God. So the devil accuses Christians or believers before God. And then the eleventh point is that the devil frequently prom prompts people or prods people to engage in unfruitful arguments, godless myths, strife, and disputations. Now, when we read from the book of Titus, chapter 3, from verse 9 to verse 11, the Bible says, But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies, stories about who gave birth to whom, and arguments and quarrels about the law, because these are unprofitable and useless. Warn a divisive person once and then warn them a second time, after that having have nothing to do with them. So we encourage to separate from people who are fond of controversies or planting strife or division among the brethren. Verse 11, you may be sure that such people are warped and sinful. They are self-condemned. So there are people who specialize in fruitless arguments. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, the Bible says, have nothing to do with godless myths. myths and old wives' tales, rather train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, halting promise for the present life and the life to come. So in verse 7, they were told to avoid by all means all godly myths and old wives' tales. So stories... Uh, stories which have got nothing to do with spirituality. We have to avoid them. They are a strategy that the devil uses also to plant confusion and division. The last point uh, in today's lesson, which is the last point of this series, is works of the flesh. I've covered this point when I was covering other points, but I'm going to anchor it on two portions of scripture, which are Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 up to 3 where the Bible says, As for you, you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The ruler of the kingdom of the air is Satan and the devil. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. <clears throat> Like the rest, we were, by, we were by nature deserving of wrath or punishment or anger from the Almighty God. So we have to avoid the works of the flesh. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to verse 21, the Bible says, The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, uh, and uh, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, watches and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So these are things that we need to take note of, my brothers and sisters. Once more, the last three points are, uh, number 10, Satan accuses Christians before God. Number 11, uh, the devil prods people to engage in unfruitful arguments, godless myths, strife, and disputations. And the last point, which is the twelfth point, the devil frequently encourages people to engage in the fruitless works of the flesh or the destructive works of the flesh. I believe you are blessed by this message. Father, we pray that you protect us from all the twelve strategies of the devil and even more strategies that might not have been covered in this teaching. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this enlightenment. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.